Hi all! Welcome back to this course on Algorithmics and Discrete Mathematics. In today's lesson, we're going to talk about solving NP-complete problems with two algorithms, an exhaustive one and backtracking. At the end of the video, you should be able to implement these two algorithms to solve the traveling salesman problem. Classically, NP-complete problems are tackled either through exact algorithm, which are reasonably fast for small problems, or suboptimal or heuristic algorithms, which deliver good enough solutions, but which are not necessarily optimal. Today, let's explore two exact algorithms to solve the traveling salesman problem, or TSP. The most direct solution to the TSP is to try all possible elementary paths or permutations of the n cities and see which one is the cheapest. This is known as a brute force or exhaustive search. If the starting city is fixed, the number of such permutation equals n minus 1 factorial. Consequently, the calculation time or the time it takes for the computer to solve the problem with this approach lies within a polynomial factor of big O n factorial. To give some more concrete meaning to this complexity, imagine that evaluating one permutation, or one elementary path, takes one microsecond. The following table summarizes the calculation time when the number of cities increases. For example, for a problem with five cities, the number of possible elementary paths equals 24, and the calculation time will be 24 microseconds. Multiplying the number of cities by only 3 increases the resolution time to approximately 24 hours, and multiplying the number of cities by 10, thus increasing it to 30, will take around 3 millions of billions of centuries. So, it's quite obvious that this algorithm becomes impractical, even for only 20 cities. Let's have a look at an example. Consider this graph. The starting point for the traveling salesman is vertex v1, and imagine, for the sake of simplicity, that he does not have to return to v1 in the end. The number of solutions to explore is therefore n minus 1 factorial if n is the number of cities. Trying all possible solutions starting from v1 can be done using a depth first search, during which we keep in memory the shortest possible path encountered. So far in this MOOC, we've considered DFS for which each vertex is explored only once. Here, we are interested in the case where a vertex does not appear twice on the same path, but can appear twice if in different paths. So here, we consider a variation of the DFS, where the list of explored vertices is modified for the current explored branch, and not for the other branches. The tree of all possible paths is shown here. The search starts on the left by proposing the first solution, v1, v2, v3, v4, which has a cost of 16. This solution is stored in memory as the best solution identified so far. The next explored solution is v1, v2, v4, v3, which has a cost of 10. This solution is better than the currently known best one, v1, v2, v3, v4, so this new solution is stored in memory as the current best solution. The search continues until all possible solutions have been evaluated. The output of the algorithm is solution v1, v3, v4, v2, which has the lowest possible cost of 7. A total of 6 solutions have been evaluated in this step-first search. The algorithm that runs through the previous tree can be seen here. It is a recursive algorithm that calls itself until a stopping condition is reached. The idea behind the algorithm is to keep in memory the best possible path that has been encountered thus far and to update it when a better or shorter one is encountered. The arguments of the call are as follows. The list of vertices, minus the starting point, the initial vertex, an empty list, which will contain the optimal path in the end, the initial weight of this empty list, which is zero, and the graph. A quick improvement of the previous algorithm is to stop the depth search when it's certain that the currently explored branch 
will not generate a better solution than the current best one. This is the case when the total weight of the edges used in the current branch of the tree is already larger than the total weight of the best solution found. This means that the branch that's explored at each step has an influence on the overall calculation time. For example, imagine that by chance we start with the branch that generates the optimal solution. When exploring the other branches, we will abort exploring them as soon as the total weight exceeds the one found for the first branch, which will save a lot of calculation time. Various strategies can be used to further optimize backtracking by pre-selecting which branches to examine first. As an example, we could select the branch whose starting vertex is the closest to the current vertex. Let's illustrate this particular backtracking approach on the same graph again shown here. The tree of all possible paths from vertex V1 is shown here. First, we try to move to his closest neighbor, which is V4. It costs 3 to move to V4, so our route already has a cost of 3 so far. Then, we continue to V3, which is the closest unexplored neighbor of V4. It costs 1 more, and so the total length is 4. Finally, we move to V2, the last remaining vertex. It adds 8 to our sum, and so we obtain a total of 12. We thus have a first estimation of the shortest path, which is V1, V4, V3, V2, even though this path is not optimal. There is no possible movement from this configuration, so we move backwards. Again, there are no other alternatives here, as we've already explored V2 after V3, so we continue backwards. Now we have an alternative option, which is to go to V2. We add the corresponding weights of 2 and obtain a partial route with a length of 5. There's only one option left, which is to visit V3. However, this move would cost us an additional 8, which would result in a total that's more than our previously found path with a length 12. So we move backwards instead. We've now explored all the options starting with V1, then V4, so we continue backwards. We now select another option when starting at V1, which is to go to the second nearest neighbor of V1, which is V3. From here, we go to V4 first. And finally, we go to V2. We obtain a total left of 7 and thus update the shortest route so far. We continue exploring the tree by going backwards twice. Now we have the option to go to V2, but it would cost too much compared to our best route, so we continue backwards. From V1, there's only one option left, going to V2. It would already cost 7, which is as much as our current best route, so we cannot expect to find the shortest path in this direction. So, we can conclude that the shortest route has a length of 7, and yet we've only explored a fraction of the trees of all possible paths. So, the backtracking solution has a much lower complexity than the brute force approach. Okay, that's it for today. I hope you've understood how to obtain an exact solution of the TSP using a brute force or exhaustive search, and how we can solve the TSP faster using backtracking. In the next lesson, Patrick will tell you how to identify the complexity of a problem. Bye.